More than three decades of relative peace since the breakup of the Soviet Union, and Germany has pursued friendlier ties with Moscow. That even developed into a significant dependency on energy imports from Russia, breaking that dependency since Russia's invasion of Ukraine is proving costly. But it's a price German leaders are willing to pay, given Russia's attack on Europe's security order. DW's Simon Young has more. The brutal conflict in Ukraine threatens peace across Europe. After six months, the ripples from it are felt far and wide. A few hundred kilometers to the west, almost a million refugees from Ukraine have arrived in Germany. They've needed places to live, schools, health care. But they also needed jobs, and German industry needed the skills many Ukrainians brought. From a German viewpoint, a beneficial effect of the war. But has Germany been profoundly changed by Putin's invasion of Ukraine? For Chancellor Scholz, speaking just days after the attack began, it was a transformative moment. We are experiencing a watershed moment. This means the world afterwards is not the same as the world before. The big break with the past is surely the government's massive spending increase for Germany's armed forces. A special 100 billion euro fund will push the annual defence budget closer to the NATO target of 2% of GDP. Another symbol of the new military stance, heavy weapons delivered, albeit after some hesitation, to the Ukrainian battlefield. Sending arms to conflict zones was once taboo. Politicians and public, once allergic to anything that smacked of militarism, are now more ready to accept the importance of a solid security strategy. I believe it has also become clear to the German public that we are indeed threatened militarily in Europe. And therefore, we unfortunately have to revise our assessment that there is no longer a conventional adversary in Europe for the German armed forces, which is what we thought in the early 2000s. For almost 25 years, we've emptied the cupboard. We closed depots and dissolved units. That's why it's very important that we spend these 100 billion euros sensibly and sustainably. The war has also forced a change in Germany's energy policy. From getting more than half of the natural gas it needs from Russia, it has pushed that down to a quarter and pledged to reduce it even further. The Green Party's economy and climate minister, Robert Habeck, has even allowed some polluting coal-fired power stations to return to operation to keep the lights on through the winter. These are pragmatic responses. Olaf Scholz's coalition came to power promising balanced budgets. Instead, they've opened the public coffers. They wanted to tackle climate change, but the war has pushed the focus onto energy security. And yet, despite these changes of tack, many are still asking whether Germany is ready to step up as a leading nation. We have a paradigm that we say, we don't really want to lead, we would rather be in the middle, even if we are a big country. We have to put that aside now and grow up in terms of security policy. I would like to see Germany play an even stronger role in Europe. I can imagine that in terms of sanctions and also on the question of which individuals in Russia should still be sanctioned, who bear responsibility for this war. Germany could take on a stronger role, a leading role. Olaf Scholz himself was accused of having the wrong instinct on Vladimir Putin, seeking cooperation rather than confrontation. Some say he has still not committed himself to Ukraine's victory. But it is not the Chancellor alone whose position has needed to change. Across Germany, attitudes are being shifted by a not-so-distant war. And for more, we can now bring in Jürgen Trittin. He's a member of the German parliament for the Green Party, which is part of Chancellor Olaf Scholz's coalition. And he sits on the parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. Mr. Trittin, in his Independence Day speech today, Zelensky said his country would fight to the end. Will Germany stand by Ukraine until the end? Yesterday, the chancellor announced a half a billion new... Uh, um, military uh, material like uh, 
uh, anti-missile uh, uh, weapons and so on. So we stick to our uh, commitment mm. that we will support Ukraine. Uh, but the, my question was whether Germany will support Ukraine until the end. Then you have to define what's the end. And I think this is a very open question. I fear that we are standing half a year after the beginning of the war on the day of the independence of Ukraine in a situation where we have to face a very long war mm. uh, between Russia and in the Ukraine. That is the bitter message of the day. Mm. Well, earlier you asked me uh, to define uh, till the end, but Zelensky uh, said he means a 100% liberated Ukraine, including Crimea and the eastern territories that Russia and pro-Russian forces occupied years ago. So do you share this definition of the end of the war? And I ask you again, will Germany support Ukraine till the end? The, the Chancellor had a very simple answer on that, that the answer was Russia is not cannot be allowed to win. Russia must be stopped. At what point it is possible to stop them? At what point it is possible to push them back? That's an open question. And I don't like uh, to define a public wording um, that is calling something like victory and so on. That is too complicated. The end of this conflict will be a question of political negotiations um, on the basis of what happened on the battlefield. Mm. Now, Germany and many of uh, its allies are supporting Ukraine with money and weapons at the same time as financing Russia's war by spending billions on Russian gas. So how, how long can this continue? Well, you see that Germany, with the Christian Democrats and the Social Democrats in power for more than 16 years, had done a very, very simple business model. They catched a competition advantage by buying cheap gas from Russia. And this basis of the German economic model is over now. And it's a question of this government. It's a question for our Minister for Economic Affairs, uh, Robert Habeck, now to bring Germany out of this dependency from fossil imports. Mm. We stopped it on the coal side. We will stop it to the end of the year by importing oil from Russia. And we are now in a process to stop the import of gas totally until 24. Mm. This is the most difficult question because if we put nearly a fifth of the global gas production out of production. And that is the case if you stop all pipelines ending in Germany and delivering gas to Europe, then there is no fast substitution. So a strategy of energy saving, of uh, opening uh, the industry for more energy efficiency, that is one of the things to mm. bring down the demand on natural gas by Germany. Mr. Trittin, how do you see, to look at the other side, Germany's relations with Russia, can they be repaired in, in our lifetime? I don't... <laughs> there, there, there is a Bavarian uh, comedian who said, I don't like prophecy because it's in the future. But I think what we have to understand is this Putin, different to the decade before, was not an anchor of stability. This was the misunderstanding by the other parties at that time. They thought Russia is the Soviet Union, but Russia is not a power of status quo that the Soviet Union has been. Russia is a revisionistic force that want to change the landscape. And until this idea to change the map of Europe by force, will not end, there will be no normalization between Europe and Russia. That is the bitter message also mm. from the 24th of February in 2022. Jürgen Trittin, the German lawmaker with the Green Party, thank you very much. Thank you very much.